And we are live here on PSGL. This is PlayStation Formula 3. And I am your host, Attack Logan, and alongside my fellow friend, T-Dub. Hello, hello. Back um, after a week off. Baku after a week off, yes. Speaking of Baku, that's where we are tonight. Segway. I like segways. I want to rank them, but there are none here. Just 19, maybe 20. Uh, Ian's not here yet. We should get him. Can you invite Ewan to the lobby, please? Because he is scheduled to compete. Uh, I can give it a go. However, he is a there was the, available. Uh, yeah, he should be able to get in through the... Uh... Yes. Anyway, here we are. 19 out of 20 drivers last week. Let's just catch up on what happened last week, which was only me. And... It doesn't look like we had any stewards findings for once. Wow. Everyone a rare occurrence. Like a rare occurrence. It's just like men on the moon today, which never happens. So, last week it was run by Angelo for the second week and got his third podium as well. There is, if you exclude Blant Brando, who's been promoted, it's a freeway tie for the lead, although actually the edge has. Um, Angelo, because he has more podiums than Lifebout. It is Angelo in first, Lifebout in second. They all have two wins, but Angelo has a second place. Lifebout's better other position is fifth place. Third is Jeslar with no wins and 44 points. Fourth is Zane with 37. And Coolman is in fifth with 31. And the only other driver that can basically catch him if everyone goes crazy is Sam with 29 6 and we do believe we have some absences uh, I believe and I will just yeah, we're go not through having, them now not having Owen oh okay that's fair enough even though he does say he's available tonight he is not the other absences are Kaya, Enzo and Tiago therefore Tito Nick and Darth are jumping in. So, we have the Baku City Circuit in all of its six kilometer glory. Let's just go through it, shall we? What was that? Didn't quite well, catch just... you there. You didn't catch we were going to do an onboard lap. No, you cut out right at the end. Oh no, here we go again. <sighs> you can still hear me though, right? I can hear you now, yeah. All right, excellent. Right, let's just go through for a lap. Are you going to go on board with someone who's about to start a lap? Uh, yes, let's find uh, the Alpine of, I believe it is Sam. Yes, it is coming down into turn number one. The thing about Baku is it's a very different track to a lot of others because you've got a lot of those 90 degree left and right hand corners. You've got to be careful of the curves on the inside there. Sam almost spat into the barrier on the right hand side but manages to negotiate it nicely down the second very long DRS straight up towards turn number three. And it is another 90 degree left hand and no high curb on the inside. You, you can attack this a little bit more. Bit of a brush of the wall as we come up towards turn number four as the high curbs return. It's been a uh, fairly neat and tidy first sector, minus that little brush going through turn number three. This part of the circuit is absolutely horrible, though, through turns five and six and then up to turn seven, which is incredibly tight. You've got to get your braking zone and your turning point precisely correct. And that curb will once again spit you into the wall. Fastest lap set by Fraser, 39.5. I'd be expected to see maybe a couple of drivers in the third. 38 as Sen manages to get through the castle section with no dramas and gets the car rotated pretty nicely there and avoids corner cutting or exceeding track limits sorry on the exit now controversial opinion I think this corner coming up is the worst corner on the F1 calendar would you uh, would you agree with that yeah especially for like heat brake testers yes hmm Horrible, horrible corner, but he gets through it with a little lock-up, but uh, no dramas thus far as we come on to the main straight. It's not really a straight. It's got a load of kinks in it. You want to try and hold it in seventh for as long as possible and then flick it up into eighth as you come round the final kink. Sure he's going to do it now. Yes, there we go. The battery is burning, and now you are just flat out foot to the floor as you get ready to cut the beam. Angelo, disappointing first half, just a 40.4. It is still Fraser out in front. Will Sen beat it? No, 39.9 slots into sixth place. Six driving a lap, make it seven. A suck here comes across the line, only eighth. Angelo down in ninth, quite disappointing from him. Make that tenth as Lozenginio goes into seventh. Uh, we have 
Eight drivers yet to sit a lap. We're going to decrease that at seven with block coming across the line. Only on medium tyres, I should say. Only in the back of the field. Zane now crossing the line. He is our fourth place driver. And he is in fifth place for the meantime. Before we have... That is, I believe, Jeslar. He's come into the pits. Jeslar, one of our leaders, of course. Feels like he was robbed of a win in France. Got a penalty at the last, very last second of the race. Zane went on to win. Also out there. Drama at the two. right until the very end, yeah. Very yes. it was very exciting, but can probably feel a little bit hard done by. This isn't usually the case though, is it? First driver to set at that time. Still the first driver on the top of the timing charts. After all of the first runs, Christian Block, interesting decision to go out on the mediums, obviously trying to save the soft tires for the race. Drivers have got to be careful of the tire wear though, because this is one of the biggest wearers of those rear tires. The rear limited circuit, it's very, very difficult to manage that. And we could see that being the difference between winning and having a disaster class and falling through the midfield. Absolutely. So Christian Block, the only driver to sit a lap on medium tires, going to be coming back the pit lane for sure. I don't think he'll be standing out there all day with those tires. Again, if you somehow manage to hack your tyres, you could still fundamentally get to pole position. Pole position, 139.535. Fraser leading our Marciano by two hundredths. Fine, fine margins, but not really in this sport, where the littlest of margins could mean the biggest of prizes. Caricelli is the only driver on a track now, apart from Zane, who's finishing his lap. Hopefully he uh, gets out of the way, because... Carichello needs a bit of a catapult down the straight. Should be going now. There we go. Catapult in the on... championship standings as well, though, doesn't he? Hasn't scored since round number one. Yep, should turn the telemetry on and show you. Look at that. 330 kilometers per hour. And yes, I know what you're going to say. Logan Sargent's going to be asking WTF is a kilometer. You can look it up on Google. That's all I'm going to say. What's a kilometer? T Dub, why? Why do you do this? I'm sorry. I, I can't believe you've done this. The keeper had come out, it was an open goal. Oh, Caricelli, though, just clipping that inside wall. No damage picked up, I don't believe, but uh, that's definitely going to compromise them. It's a really scruffy first sector, I have to say, from the Mercedes driver. Yeah, and he'd want to do better in a second. Again. He hits the wall again, my goodness. Yeah, we get it, the car is bad, it's the W14, but this is a video game, remember, it's not relative to real life. No wonder Lewis is going to Ferrari next year, I don't blame him. It's my team after all, Ferrari. I have to be unbiased here, you see. That's the th hit the wall for a third time, by the way, oh, as well. Oh dear, oh dear, this is Caricelli's worst name, I think, is he back out? No, he's still going at full speed, how's his sector times looking? We'll have to find out once he gets around this heck hole of a corner, if I can say that. I mean, that's what drivers have been saying about me. I have to keep it as clean as possible. It's only a 170. I mean, oh, my word. Another, another mistake. Surely going to be coming into the pits because this is not going to be good enough to get anywhere out of the bottom places. That's a lazy tap in. That's five barrier hits on one lap. I mean, concerns have to be raised for Caricelli here. This is uh, not an ideal start to qualify at all, and the Mercedes does yeah. peel off into the pits. I mean, it's Baku, yeah, but even I... Now, I'm not trying to pity him, but even I would probably be taking it cautiously there, yeah, but I would never be hitting the wall there. Caricelli, serious questions to be answered there in the press conference coming up. Because uh, that was not him. He's honestly, he had a, he almost won the first round, but he got a penalty. So, uh, you know, he, had, he can produce the goods on any given day, but it just seems like today's not been his day so far. We've got all the drivers coming back out for their next lap. Shouldn't be raining. This is Baku, after all. It rarely ever rains. It's right next to the Middle East. Uh, of course, former part of the Soviet Union. Uh, along with all those other countries, including the obvious big one, which we're not talking about, I've been told. Yes, um, unfortunately, of course, um, it's relations with other Soviet Union states, we're just going to say, not so great, sadly. We wish it were 
nice and harmonious, but unfortunately, that's sometimes the way it goes. But that's all those politicals we're going to get. That's it. No more. Yeah, let's just let's, uh, focus let's on avoid. You. Let's avoid the politics. We do have to talk about current po uh, provisional poll sitter Fraser. Improved by uh, two hundredths of a second in the first sector, but then invalidated going through turn number seven. So I would imagine the Alpha Tower is going to return to the pits at the end of this lap. But Giovanni on, he's not set a lap yet. He invalidated the first time right on the edge of the walls. So here he comes to the final sector, which is the last tight corner there for speeding through the kinks. A one and a two and a three coming up before down to the finish line, which is right at the end of the track. It's so scary. You have to cross the line, then break as soon as you cross the finish line, basically. Uh, it is the... Oh, wow. That is wow. a absolute blinder. It's an Alpha Tower. We won two. Is this 2008 when um, you know Sebastian Vettel and Sebastian Bourdais just the first and a fourth in qualifying into the Italian Grand Prix 2008. But of course, uh, Bordet had a horrible start. He stalled. Uh, but Vettel went on to win his first Grand Prix, the first of what would be many. Tito crosses the line and goes fourth. Lifeboat, the championship leader, if we don't count count backs, don't count count backs, because a 139.357. Time's definitely starting to drop. Angelo, a tenth behind his championship rival Jeslar needs to get up there now and he's coming through the first few corners Mala Marciano gets overtaken by Sam who goes up to fourth just behind Angelo got Darth Fifa coming across the line and he only manages to improve by seven thousand and remains in ninth who else have we got Cool man got caught up in the final sector. That's why the oh, time's no. only 40.4. Luca Rapassa does find just under four tenths to put the McLaren inside the top six, though. And yeah, so Saki goes to six for 498, just under the 139.5s. Christian Block is coming into the pits. Caricelli's not set up, and neither has Nick. Has he lost his front wing? Is that just a... Yeah, so. he's lost his front wing. That is not what you want to see, and he's still not got a lap on his just belt. Front wing was there on my screen, I have to say, so maybe a, a little bit of a visual glitch there. Zane puts two Red Bulls inside the top six, so nice improvement on his second flying lap, joining Ale Marciano in the 1 minute 39.4 club, because as you can see from the timing charts, there's quite a few of them in that ballpark. Absolutely. So, five minutes left in the session, just under, and we have still Giovanni up at the top with a 139.183, and... Coming back in, and he was going to come in with uh, some applause there from the Alpha Tauri engineers. What a great lap time! What a tough lap time it's going to be. At the time, he erased the previous best, shaved three and a half temps off of it. It's very rare you see those kind of improvements here on PSGL, considering how close the competition usually is. And I'm sure Maybe, it'll be yeah. much closer in the race. Yeah, and what a difference a couple of minutes makes. Fraser invalidated his lap, was in first place, now bumped all the way down into ninth. Oof. Just goes to short, goes very quickly as well. So we're just preparing for the final segment of laps here in qualifying for the free race in Azerbaijan. Just to let you know, we uh, we don't do this ourselves. We've got some backing from our good friends at GT Omega and Sim Racing Centre. More about that, t Blob. Well, you can get some excellent little discounts going on. If you use the code PSGL, PSGL, if you head over to GT Omega, and if you want to, uh, you know, get your hands on a, a few racing equipment things, they can be uh, very, very nice and very, very helpful. We have seen, and I'm just going to cut away from that quickly because I was watching Luca Rapassa oh, and Yasu no. Saki driving in formation around their inlaps, but they've made contact on the pit entry and given each other a penalty. Now... What? I'm not sure what the plan will be there, but certainly doesn't look great. And I wonder if we'll have to do a restart. But two, back to, sorry, the uh, brilliant sponsors that we have. If you head over to GT Omega, get your hands on some racing equipment, I... some chairs, things like that. You can use a 5% discount there. And Sim Racing Center, lots of coaching courses and setups, 10% off. 10% off indeed. That is... Uh... 
that is something we've never seen before. We will have to restart. I have been told we'll be staying in the lobby, though. It will save time. Right. I mean, it was, I'm, yeah, it was a very weird little incident. I can see them talking how it was a, a very fun drag race, and it did look like it. But if we turn our attention to Zayn has actually retired in the pit, so that second Red Bull we won't be seeing again. Yeah, he's decided not to go out again. Uh, quite interesting plan from him. He hopes that's not going to be beat, though. You can imagine he's going to get bumped down. Probably going to end up outside the top 10 and pretty comfortably outside the top 10 as well because we have got a lot of big names a little bit further down. Fraser, you would imagine, can improve. Jeslar also. Lorenzino has uh, put in a few flyers of qualifying laps this season and Coolman has been blocked on both of his qualifying laps. Currently still down in 16th. We'll uh, need to find probably a second, you would imagine. Caricelli could pull it out of the bag as well, although what we've seen from the first flying lap he attempted doesn't necessarily bode particularly well. And Christian Block, we don't really know what to expect from that Aston Martin, who started on the mediums, of course. So here we go, the final segment of this session. Who is going to come out on top? Let's find out. Caricelli will kick us off as he crosses the line here on the highway used in Baku. It's an actual road, of course. This is a street circuit. And it has... Oh, he's hit the wall again! And he's crashed into the wall! This has just gone completely wrong. For Caricelli, he's not going to get another lap. So, basically, he will be starting in the dead last if Nick sets a lap. So there's no recovery from that. Yeah, Unbelievable. It's almost like his car's magnetised to the barriers. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. Well, I mean, it went through one flying lap, hit it five times, and has, hasn't even managed to get through turn number one. It's unfortunate because we know how quick Caricelli is, but things obviously not clicking here. Fraser will be the first driver over the line then, assuming that role from the Mercedes. Invalidated on run number two, will we see a big improvement through the first sector? It is a tenth and a half so far for the former provisional pole sitter, but it's been a very messy 6-7 chicane. Yeah, he needs to improve from there. This should be a piece of cake this corner and he does make a piece of cake but now it's the I am stupid section the castle section he's not stupid here he gets through it nicely cuts it through like butter with a butter knife now through the second part of the second sector the fast kinks that are quite tight enough to say for kinks and then breaking right down into the downhill and then down towards the final tight corner I should say and three goes He's got to down. jump in quickly. Cool man has made a mess of it. Was too close to his teammate going down into turn number one. A lot of drivers at the back of the queue were worried they weren't going to make the flag. Invalidated through turn one and hit the barrier. So Cool man's going to be down in 16th. Probably even worse. Not what he wanted at all. So Fraser going to cross the line. Is he going to return to his humble abode? Provisional pole. It's looking good so far. But it's not good enough for first. Third is still great run from the... Former provisional pole sitter. Now, who else is crossing the line? I think it's uh, Lorenzino. He doesn't improve by much. Uh, I believe that is uh, that is Jeslar. Jeslar we haven't even seen throughout the session. Teddo has uh, retired from the session. Must have, uh, well, he must have been pitting. Who else have we got? Taps on Lifeboat. Lifeboat about to cross the line. Is he improving? No, he is not. So he will stay in third for the meantime. Giovanno still on pole position. Still on pole position, improves. Now, can anyone cut that down? Al Marciano coming across the line. Needs to improve by three tenths and some. Here he comes to the line. Oh, no. Second. Just under a tenth. Sam comes across the line. No improvement in terms of position. Now, Angelo's coming through. He's got... Is that Rapasa behind? Rapasa's invalidated, yeah. so he's out of the picture. So, Angelo now... Coming across the line, is it going to be good enough for Paul? It's not. He's not actually went up any places. He improves, but not up any places. And Nick gets on the board to consume Caricelli to the back of the grid. And that will be your session complete. A lot of drivers made a mess of that. There was some squabbling going on between the McLaren Ferrari and Aston Martin of Yasisaki that we've just seen. Really messy at the end of the session. A lot of drivers leaving it way too late and really, really costing them. But drivers that didn't get it late. The Alfa Tauri of Giovanni set two provisional pole laps that would have been good enough to start from first place. Ale Marciano, brilliant stuff to get on the front row as well. Ahead of Jesla, Dark Fether and Lifebout completing the top five. Fraser was 
provisional poll earlier on relinquished that to his team. It will start sixth ahead of Angelo. Sem Zayn and Yasir Saki completing our top 10. Luca Rapassa just missing out. Tito, the two Sauber cars didn't quite have the pace. Christian Block likewise. And then we've got the Williams down towards the bottom with Coolman, who had a very messy session. Caricelli unable to get a lap time in. Nick with a concerning show of pace. Ten and a half seconds off the benchmark time. And there you go. And we had to... Oh, it's gone now. And we do believe Nick set a time that was 10 seconds down. But of course... Uh, oh, Tedo's left the session. I'll get him back in. If I can. Interesting that we did see, and we probably expected to see it, the field spread did open up a little bit more. And we saw a lot more mistakes than we usually do as well. Yeah, we do. Quite indeed. I uh, should mention... Uh, Actually, we'll just get picked Tedo back. Some drivers have already left. Um, ignore the race start. We're not going to do... We're not going to make fun of it um, because that was just a, an April Fool's joke last week. So, uh, as you know, the cars are just going to retire on track, or just crash or anything. And then we're going to do another lobby. Uh, not another lobby, another session. So that we can have... <clears throat> So we can actually get onto the race. So just ignore the start here. Uh, as you can right. see, they are going to go down quite a short uh, run into the first turn, I have to say. It's about... Yeah, uh, especially, especially short when you uh, pile it straight into the wall, I have to say, on the left-hand side. And the winner normal. of the Demolition Derby, though, is the Mercedes of Tito, who isn't in the session, like you said. Anyone Cheats. else? No, I think everybody that's still running is out off the session and we'll have to rejoin so uh, we don't we aren't sorry able to crown a real winner of the demolition derby and this ladies and gentlemen is art 200 mile an hour art art what a fantastic azerbaijan Tito. grand prix though wasn't it that was very enjoyable we can no, crown no, mercedes no, 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 of no, tito no, our no, winner no, no, i think no, it was no, christian no, block no. coming home in second place ahead of the Ferrari of Angelo. So uh, thank you everybody for watching. That's been us from back and we'll see you next week. Please ignore everything he's just said. We're just doing the normal. Look, you only get six points because you retired on track cheap. I love it. It says minus 0.117. Yeah. So Brilliant fastest lap though. Look at that. 31.5 seconds. You didn't do any stops. Disqualified. Wow, can't believe it. And again, all the drivers in the um, 2021 Belgian Grand Prix, actually, no, technically they did two stops, two red flags, or counted as stops, except for in the pits. Yeah, So uh, what a fast that was. The race did not resume. I still can't believe they went ahead of that race in 2021. I think it should have been called off, no points awarded. Of course, I mean, that would be easier to say now. I, I would... I would agree with that. However, I don't think Max Verstappen fans are going to be a huge, uh, a huge advocate for that opinion. Considering, uh, with hey, those hey, points. Hey, albeit very limited points, it did mean. Uh, well, I'm not sure I, actually. Would it have meant that he won it? Diehard Shumi fan here, and I think him winning 2002 Austria was a farce. Should have been Barrichello that day. Instead, for I'd say to take things in their own hands, as I mm. try to complete the grid. I mean, he did allegedly repay him at uh, Indianapolis. Even though that was not the plan. <laughs> I think it was. It didn't really matter, though. The title was already decided. The Constructors and Drivers Championships were already decided, so... Even Fair itself enough. out in the end. Yeah. Quite ironically. Uh, it'd be funny if a race ended in a dead heat. That did happen in Cuba for a non-championship race once. I can't remember who it involved, but it was a non-championship Formula One race. Uh, it's still a Grand Prix, but it's not a in World Cuba. Championship Grand Prix. Yeah, there was a non-championship race in Cuba, I'm sure. Wow. Dead Heat Grand Prix. Uh, the only F1 spec race. Uh, you know, I know the sport's called F1, but you've got to remember, it's Grand Prix racing. Because, why am I logged out of Reddit? What year was it? Not logged out. Um, 1967. Oh, okay. 
Actually, I, I lie. I don't know why I thought it was in Hebrew. Um, oh. Probably just remembering something. No, it's in Italy. It was in Italy. I'm sorry. The Syracuse Grand Prix in Sicily. And it was a dead heat. Was it a dead heat? Yes. Between it, Mike yeah, Parks it's... and Ludovico Scarfiotti. Italy is not quite as exciting as Cuba, considering we do race there at least once every year. Yeah, it was the last running, the Syracuse Grand Prix, the last running. It only had 12 drivers, including Josepher, Joe Bonnier, uh, may those two rest in peace, uh, Guy Ligier, the same guy that did uh, Ligier cars, um, Joe Schlesser, Bob Anderson, not the Bob Anderson that was uh, throwing darts. So I'm trying to not confuse him and Bob Champion, who was a champion jockey. Yeah, Bob Anderson was a darts player. Thought he would be. Um, yeah. Not the same one, obviously, as the race driver. Yeah, so Mike Parks and Ludovic Scarfiotti, both in Ferraris. And, oh, that was quick. Wow, that was quick. And, ladies and gentlemen, that is why you stay in the lobby. Five minutes it took. Very efficient work from everybody involved. You have to, uh, you have to give them a thumbs up and a round of applause. What this does do, though, remember, is it does reset the tyres. So everybody's going to get all of their soft tyres back. That could change people's strategy potentially if they used all three sets of softs during the qualifying session. We'll have to uh, keep an eye out for that one. Mm -hmm. So as you know, six kilometers, we're going to be doing 26 laps and make sure you keep out the walls for this one because they're everywhere. Unlike tracks like Australia, which don't, except I believe uh, when you're going next to the lake. That's not badmouth Australia. That's a lovely little circuit. I didn't badmouth it at all. I was just stating the obvious, which is what the track is like. I never gave an opinion. It's truth. You go, you go to the track. That's what you see. There are walls next to uh, the track at the lake section. And, of course, there's grass everywhere else. And I actually think Australia does well in that. Anyway, here we go. We have 12, 19 drivers, five lights ahead of them. And uh, underway here in Baku, as we get a brief glitch on the globby, but it is Giovanni and Alamarciano heading into the first turn, a relatively clean behind as they filter their way through that first right-hander, left-hander, 90 degrees, as, oh, there's a collision now, that's Darth, and uh, Lifeboat, who just getting a tussle with the muscle in the second corner, Tato and Zane making movement as well. Coming down into the third corner, Lightbout still with the Ferrari of Darth FIFA and Fraser Basley Angelo. He makes up a position there and Angelo strikes back from Fraser. Down into turn number five we go. It's still Giovanni leading the race. Luca Rapasso and Yasser Saki going through six and seven side by side. Uh... And actually, is this? No, it is five and six. I'm sorry, not six and seven. Oh, and uh, that was Tito nearly running in the back off Luca Rapasso. Through the castle we go. And it looks relatively clean going through there. So it looks like Giovanni's still leading ahead of Marciano and Jesler. Darth Fifa and Lifebelt were fighting around, and so were Angelo and Fraser, but relatively safe through the first lap. Coleman's had an issue, two and a half seconds off the back of the pack. I think there may be some kind of drums going on for the McLaren. No damage that I can see, but has got a lot of work to do. Everybody starting on the white marked hard, tire, hard tires, apart from Caraccelli in 18th on the mediums. Oh. Rogue Trader, eh? Well, he's not made up any positions. Uh, Coleman is the only one that's pretty much lost a bunch of positions. Uh, I know Zane lo Zane's had a bad start. Zane is in the championship hunt and he is having a bad start it's the last thing you want so here we go Luca Rapasa looking for move on Zaki in the first corner he can't get it done there is movement for Laurentino though who goes to the inside of title and up into 14th place further up no change from the top five I should mention 
Only six and below have made some movement. Only three drivers have stayed in the position below sixth place uh, from where they started after the first lap. That is Angelo and Lifeboat going into turn number three. And it looks like Lifeboat's holding his position of everything he's got. But Angelo, the joint championship leader, actually they are both championship leaders. So this is actually a very important battle here. Going through, but it, at the stands, Jeslar is up there in the lead of this championship. I think. Yeah, works team versus customer team, and it was the Fry that gets ahead of the Haas. Lifebow is uh, looking a little bit slow in these early stages. Fraser already right on the back of the Haas as he dropped nearly eight tenths to the two Ferraris now. So we come through once again the back portion of sector two. All the drivers trying to get around and make some moves hopefully doesn't seem like there is going to be any so the two ferraris right next to each other kind of like uh, science and the clerk today uh or i should say in japan spoilers the swap positions in the last few laps which meant uh science got the podium i think they're trying to send science out big time and the two ferraris are going to go side by side down the home stretch and angelo looks like he's going to get priority team orders at ferrari no dramas though just Keeping it safe, keeping it relatively simple. But is this uh, Darth FIFA going to try and go back in inside? No, he was teasing, no? So maybe not team orders, just a good old fashioned battle and Christian Blocks coming to the pits. Oh no. Five second penalty for speeding and, well, Christian He's given up, retired. he's had enough. That did not. Oh! Yeah, did Al Marciano! Sorry! Had to cut in Al Marciano's had a shocker! at the second corner and has already lost position to Jeslar and now Angelo too coming through and he's lost another position to Angelo now. Darth FIFA is right behind there. Has he got any damage on that front wing? Nothing visual that I can see, but big, big mistake. Safety We've car. got a safety car and it's oh, Caricelli uh, and uh, Coleman. Caricelli and Coleman. Yes, uh, that is damage to Caricelli's front wing. Yeah, completely come off, and it's on the track. They have to bring out the safety car. Uh, quite controversial move, seems, but they are going to bring it out. And, oh, dear, you can see he's really struggling about that. I guess two minutes is not enough to get the wreckage cleared. So we're going to have the safety car coming out. Then again, in 2017, we had a red flag in the real F1. We had a red flag for too much damage on the track. And we had to restart, and of course, we all know how that ended. <clears throat> Lance Stroll, <clears throat> podium, <clears throat> rookie. I mean, if we're talking about 2017, are we going to talk about Lewis Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel, or I as a, a self-proclaimed as a self-proclaimed Ferrari fan? Do you not necessarily want to talk about that moment? Vettel let himself down that day, but at least he came back and is still on good terms with Lewis Hamilton, and even Lewis. <laughs> Lewis suggesting that Vess will be great replacement at Mercedes. That would be that would be that would be sick to watch. No, honestly, I'd love to see it, but I don't think we're seeing it. Whoa! And uh, looks like lifeboats coming in. Yeah, we saw the Haas really struggling for pace just before the safety car came out and dropped out of the DRS range of Darth FIFA and had Fraser all over the back of him. So I'm not too surprised to see that. We do see a lot of drivers further down coming in, though. Yasisaki's in. So is Kuma. No, Kuma's staying out. Nico in. Tito Lorenzino, the two Alfa Romeo Salbers, have not worked this very nicely, both queuing in the pits. And Caricelli obviously joining them, minus a front wing. So... Lifeboat deciding to go early. He has come in for the medium tyre. Not sure if that will last to the end of the race. If not, then they'll have to do another pit stop, wherever the tyre will be. It will probably be soft, so it might be medium though, if there's another safety car. So this will get them to the end of the race. Oh, actually, no, they can throw hards as well. They have to use the used hards, though, because I don't think you get more than one set of hards. Uh, no, I think you only get one set. For the race because we don't have a practice session so uh, they would have to go back onto those tires but obviously they didn't use them too much anyway so they should be fairly decent if they do have to put them back on now though I think is a fairly decent time to talk about some of the partners once again title sponsor GT Omega using the code PSGL get yourself a 5% discount at checkout and of course Sim Racing Center SRC using the same code PSGL that is 10% off their services 
yes, please go check them out. It's a lovely service. You won't regret it. So Giovanna's still leading here. It's not much has changed. So the safety car is only going to cause a, a lull in the action. Not going to gang cars up again and basically cause a crazy grandstand WrestleMania-like ending. Oh, without spoiling it yesterday, WrestleMania, my goodness, what, what an ending. What, what, or not just the ending, the whole show, my goodness. Unable to comment. Oh yeah, you don't watch wrestling, do you? Near. I know it's I'm, not a real I assume sport, it was very fun. Brilliant. It was the 40th one, so they had to make it memorable. I see. But I'm not going to spoil it, just in case you didn't have WWE Network. I know I don't. I was just following it on Twitter. <laughs> Needs must. What is interesting, though, a nice little uh, symmetry appearing in the timing tower. We've got an Alpha Terry followed by an Alpine, and then we've got a Red Bull sandwiched by two Ferraris, and then another Alpha Terry and Alpine, and then, just going down as well, the two Williams sandwiched by the two McLarens. That's... Uh, that's a nice little sequence. Yes. Andretti wishes they could join the fun. <laughs> Got to bring it back to Andretti. Oh, they, they should be given the place. I mean... I, I find the arguments they give against bringing Andretti in slightly weak. Um, but Jeez. the FIA and F1... Are uh, constantly at each other's necks at the minute, so uh, they probably disagree with each other just out of spite. I be, I begin wholeheartedly, and because uh, you know, it's we need some more teams. What if one team folds? There's only going to be nine teams. I mean, they're not going to go to Andretti. They'd have to do more than just take their spot to get into the sport yeah I mean I think 10 is obviously a nice round number but um 20 just yeah. feels too few yeah and I I remember when it was 12 teams anyway we are about to get underway the safety car has to come in this lap surely everyone's ganged up we've done a couple laps and we should be getting underway soon and then Giovanno will be dictating the pace of this entire 18 car pack He's got Jeslar behind. Jeslar's not won a race yet this season. Neither has Giovanno himself, in all fairness. Angelo is on two wins. So is, as the safety guard does come in this lap, so is Lifebout. Lifebout already pitting. We'll have a lot of work to do. So here we go, Giovanno. Right going into the inside. Now completely slowed down. And cars going all over the place. Going left, going right. They're not sure... What's going to happen next is going to have to build up some temperature in that car too. Those tyres will be running so cold if he doesn't get them weaving around. So here we go. When is he going to go? That is the question. He looks like he's teasing it. Whoa, look how close Jesler is getting there. These drivers... Uh... Oh, there he goes. Giovanno, what a run he's got. That is a fantastic run. But is it going to be enough to get away from Jezlar? Jezlar is still creeping back up. He is about four tenths behind now. There's no moves allowed before the control line. And there it is. He's through the timing beam. And that is Fraser on his inside. Not a good restart for Darth FIFA, who's trying to fend off Fraser. But Fraser gets the initiative into the inside and into fifth place. No change up at the top. Nick is up in 13th, but you've got to take note that he's losing positions already to Lifeout and Saki. They are in 11th place. That's Sem and FIFA. Dark FIFA coming through. Turn 4 and they touch wheels. And Sem, I think, might have just hit the wall there, teed up. And that's for Passa getting through him. Yep, definitely tapped the wall. Really weird restart from Darth FIFA. Got a good launch compared to Ale Marciano. Then just ran out of top end speed. Got swamped by Fraser into turn one. And seemingly can't switch the pace back on. Under pressure from now, the McLaren and Luca Passa. Sem seems to have managed to get through it without any damage, though. Yeah, seems to have. Now they're coming through the castle section. 
and all clean there as well. It's such a scary section. It's easy to make a mistake, but none of them are doing that right now. So we come through. And it is currently a six tenths gap at the top. And look who's behind Jesla right now, his championship rival, Angelo. If he gets through, he will be provisionally leading this championship by two points. So big, big title implications coming through. Of course, I say big. There's only, what, four rounds to go, including this one. So here we go. He's going for it. Side by side. And they're right behind Giovanna as well. Side by side into turn number one. Oh, and Jezor nearly hits the wall. Fantastic battling. And Angelo now leads this championship. Angelo on the offensive. You thought Jezor may think the best one of defence would be attack and try and go after Giovanna, but seemingly didn't have the straight line speed and having to concede that place. And now will probably be under pressure from Ale Marciano, who has shown some fairly decent pace as Ooh. well. Squabbling continuing, though, as Life Bow gets ahead of Coolman into turn number three, and Nico getting past Nick in 15th and 16th. Although, a bit of bang t banging of tyres, a bit of love tapping, and they completely mess it up. It's uh, shades of Magnussen and De Vries from oh, Canada dear. last year. And Another it's the winning who comes car. off worse. And safety car number two. Yes, that was not particularly smart from the two of them. So we're going to have to start this all over again. Brilliant. So it will still be G uh, Giovanni in the lead with Angelo now ahead of Jesler and indeed the championship. And this has just been a horrible day for the drivers who started on the back row. Uh, first we had Caricelli losing his wing. Now we've got uh, Nick who thankfully does get through the castle section unfazed. Wow, the crowd are loving him having no front wing. You know, that was just probably respecting his guts getting through that full send. So, pit stops incoming, it seems. It's going to be interesting to see what people do here. Who blinks out of the leaders on those hard tyres? Obviously, have to pit at some point. You would expect judging how the first few laps have gone, that we will see another safety car at some point. So they could potentially try and extend this up until that next safety car and chuck on the medium tyres. Doesn't look like Angelo is going to be coming in. Is, he is. He, is there a little bit of dummying going on? The two leaders are coming in, as is everybody behind, it seems. Yeah, don't cut the pit lane line now. Is, uh, or don't overstep the pit lane limits, but it doesn't look like they are. And that means Lifeboat is going to get the lead of this race. Yeah, but you would imagine Lifeboat is going to have to pit again, though. Definitely. Oh, yeah. These guys, if there is another safety car, I mean, Coolman's put the soft tyres on, so we'll definitely have to come in again. Those mediums, I doubt they're going to go all the way. I know they've put them on on lap eight, and we will probably have a few more safety car laps, but you're going to have to really try and extend and manage those rear tyres to get those to the end. So uh, I'd be expecting to see everybody into the pits once more, apart from potentially Zane, who's put on the hard tyres again. Yeah, so those hard tyres will get to the end of the race. Coleman definitely not. He's on soft. He's the rogue runner, as we can see. Rogue runner in the soft tires. And Lifeboat, the only half driver tonight, Ian could not start tonight. He is currently representing the American team very well. Much better than, well, some people. But leads the race currently, although this was because of the safety car, everyone coming in. And he will now be leading the field when we get back on the way. That's assuming he stays there. What, uh, what, what if a Haas driver did once? <clears throat> he fought Ericsson hit us. Probably the worst or most embarrassing moment I've ever seen in F1. Yes. And uh, that's the way it goes in Formula 1 so far. Sometimes you can easily, it's easy to lose control of the car just one snap of finger and we will be doing another lap of this i presume because that's how long the usually last it's never out for less than two laps 
I have to talk about Caraccelli here, though. This is uh, coming to him nicely, you'd have to say, on the hard compound tyres after starting on the mediums. It'll be a stretch, but could potentially try and get those tyres to the end of the race. And has got some track position. You'd expect maybe he'll get swallowed up by the guys that pitted under the second safety car, the likes of Giovanni and Angelo, coming through. But uh, all's the then... All, all, I can't get the expression out. All's well, it's well. A complete, that's the one. Complete brain fade it might be coming in though here Caricelli no little bit of a dummy well deciding to stay out quite a interesting strategy so they still lead the race cool man in again as is Nick Not so really uh, soft tyres probably being changed for a set of hards I'm trying to look as the McLaren comes in yes they are the hard tyres So, 18 open wheel racing cars coming through to rally up, get geared up for the resumption of the race now. Coleman and Nick are pitting again. They should be getting... Ah, I see uh, Coleman's trying to exploit the two pit stops rule, uh, the, the pit, mandatory pit stop rule, but... Uh, I think Coolman didn't mean to put the softs on. He is back at the back anyway, so it's going to make very little difference. Tiago not happy with the damage being sustained by Nick in the Williams. Not ideal for the uh, other Williams driver that's missing this week. And uh, yeah, chassis change might be needed, although uh, I don't think Williams can afford... I don't think they can afford lunch, let alone a new car at the moment. Oh dear, that's horrible. I love Williams. I want to see them do well, but uh, you know, someone just needs to uh, give them a penny and uh, update all their facilities, and then you know they might be able to get back to where they were. Plus a works engine deal, maybe. Yeah, that could Although, work. to be fair, though, to be fair, look at McLaren and Aston Martin. They've proven that you don't need a works engine deal to be able to beat the uh, the main manufacturer team. So uh, you could still do it with Indeed. Mercedes engines. Who knows? So, should be getting away again. We wait for them we are to... in the way. Yeah, not yet. We cross the line first. So the safety car pulls away. It's going to be lifeboat that dictates the pace off this train. Hopefully not like Yarn or Trolley. Choo choo all aboard the Trolley train. All aboard the Fernando train, stopping at Monte Carlo. So Lifeboat, Saki, Teddo, Caraccelli, Nico and Lorenzino going to be getting underway. We've got the two lone wolves right now. They've only got one car represented past Naston, and then it's two by two of Mercedes and Sauber in third, fourth, fifth and sixth. So when's Lifeboat going to go? There he goes. He goes much, much later than uh, the first restart by Bajavano and off they go and it looks like the two Mercedes are going into battle and that is Caricelli. Oh, a slide there coming out of it. He manages to hold it but loses the battle and actually he's got the Cybers right behind him as they filter through to turn number three. It's still life by ahead by quite the margin as there's some squabbling going on between the Cybers and the Mercedes. These two teams used to be united in Le Mans. They won, they won Le Mans in 1989, I can't remember. But they definitely had a striking car. They had a car teamed up at Mercedes as well, uh, at Formula 1 as well, I do believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, they're now at war with each other. As now Cybers with Ferrari engines. So... It's still like about head off Saki, Tito and Caricelli making their way through the castle section. Keep the tabs on Angelo who's in this title bout as well as... Angelo, I do have to say though, Angelo has got past Giovanni on this restart and is looking very racy behind the two Saubers. So that is crucial for what uh, I think we can still call the net race lead. Yeah, because the top six there haven't hit since the first safety car. And now they're going to be coming under threat from... The pace advantage that is being held by Angelo. He's playing his Joker right now. And he's right behind Lorenzino. Look, he can barely touch him from there. Now, he doesn't want an autograph. He wants to get straight through into sixth place. And there we go. Like cutting through butter. 
or taking candy from a baby, but please don't try do both. Uh, that would be very gruesome indeed. As they filter through start lap 11, no DRS until the next lap, which we didn't have last time because the safety car came out before that could happen. As Lifeboat, actually, the answer is getting very close to Lifeboat here, and that's a mistake. That's a, is that a mistake from Nico? Or yes, it because... was just went a little bit too deep into turn number two. Angelo said thank you very much and gets up into the top five. Giovanni on the move as well, getting past the other Sauber of Lorenzino into turn number three, as we just saw there. Alan Marshall, a bit shaky out of that turn now. They're right close to each other, I must mention. It cannot be separated by anything but a few temps are these drivers. Now, should be keeping it clean through the capsule section. I always get quite... Uh, quite pumped when they go through these areas because it is quite spectacular to watch uh, that was uh, Angelo going right shifting through the barrier there, that would have been absolutely catastrophic had that gone completely wrong, should mention that second and third, the gap is 9 tenths starting to fade away from DRS opportunities so this is not looking good for Tedo, he's got to pick up the pace he wants to fight Yasuo Saki and potentially Lifeboat. So, Angelo right behind Caracelli. You can tell he's got a massive pace advantage and he's going to have it through these corners too. So, he's got to be careful not to hit Caracelli's back. Caracelli on the much harder compound but more durable. Angelo gets right past him and into fifth pla uh, fourth place. Giovanni and Nico also side by side as well. Uh, Caracelli, is he fighting him still? Yes, he is. He's actually defending. Oh, oh, he's hit him. And he's spun. He's spun. I thought Angelo was going to be in big trouble there. But instead, Caracelli has just completely wrecked his own race. He was trying a, a tricky strategy. As there's a fly on my screen. Sorry about that. He's in um, the wall again. Yeah, he's in the wall again. But I think he's... No, he's not got damage. He's only wrecked his race, though. Sorry about that. Uh, now, Tito's got a 1.9 second gap as there's a move in turn four between Rapassa and Laurentino. And Rapassa gets through and into ninth. There's chaos happening behind him, too. There's a battle between Laurentino and Freezer. And it's free wide. Look at this. Darth FIFA going to get it. Through he goes. And he knocks them back. And down to 11th and 12th. And up to 10th goes Char FIFA. What a move that was. What an opportunity he saw. And decided to take advantage of it as Caracelli having another incident at turn number 7. Yeah, Lorenzino clearly the cork in the bottle. Ale Marciano got through it to the wall. Goes Lorenzino oh. and Fraser. Front wing's gone for both drivers. Fraser was looking and for a gap that was always going to be closing. And it is the, well, the Sauber's certainly come off worse with no front wing. I think Fraser may have got off scot-free, which would be unbelievable luck. I, I thought you were reacting to there as another incident involving Angelo. There is an incident at the front. I think it was Angelo. I think he's struggling. Angelo has damage. Angelo got damage. He's collided with Yasosaki and he's going to come into the pit lane. Into the pit lane. He oh, no, no. no! Contact. Oh, dear. That's uh, Tato. Yeah, safety car. It has to be a safety car. There's a lot of damage everywhere. And Tato is going down the order right now. It was Tato and Angelo. And then he's just collided with Jesla, I think. And that is complete chaos as the fly's got my screen again it's a big let's just, screen uh, angle, but oh. let's just summarize what we've seen in the last 30 seconds or so so i'm not sure if you caught it but the contact between Lorenzino and Fraser was pretty much what we've just seen from tito and i can't quite remember who it was i think angelo. it was ali marciano yeah or was it uh who was it, it was angelo angelo is in deep trouble he's had to get his ring changed but he's back on fresh rubber and it will be allowed to pass the safety car who's uh, just waiting to uh, order a McDonald's. Uh, just kidding. As uh, Caracelli has mm, so, decided uh, to retire. Yeah, so Caracelli out. It was the battle between Fraser and Lorenzino. It was uh, Fraser who tried to go around the outside through the kink of turn 14. Never, ever going to work. Ended up putting them both into the wall. Not really sure who was at fault because it happened so quickly. But uh, yeah, looked like Fraser was going for a gap that wasn't really going to be there. And Lorenzino just sort of uh, naturally coming across and putting them both into the wall. Both have pitted. Well, actually, has Lorenzino pitted? 
Florentino. Florentino, no, is, he's which not is Pedro. strange because it happened before the safety car came out. So uh, Lorenzino driving this that without a front wing, strangely enough. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, uh, I didn't see what happened to Angelo because I was watching that, and then we saw this the third incident going down the straight, which was between Ale Marciano and the second Mercedes of Tida, who is also without a front wing. So really kicking off in the last couple of laps. I'm trying to see who got in trouble there. Uh, it didn't seem like it was Angelo. I'm trying to see where the damage came from because I saw damage completely come off. It was Angelo trying to make a move on Tato into the downhill section. And I'm not sure where that damage came from as uh, Lifeboat is pitting, as I assumed. In fact, I think they're all pitting. Yes. So uh, this will, uh, well, this will spare Angelo's blushes a little bit because be able to get a couple of places back with all these drivers in the pits. And because uh, we have got some teammates and everybody is piling in, he is going to uh, benefit from some drivers having to queue behind them, notably the two Alpines who are close together, as were the two McLarens. Yeah, and uh, Fraser's pits, so that will be another driver gone, I think. Is that P8? It is P8. Wow, he hasn't. Oh, no, he hasn't. But he will be at a disadvantage of more used rubber. So basically, he's reset back to square one. He's only lost one position overall. So it could have been definitely could have been much worse. No penalties, by the way. So that's always good to see. This has very much benefited Lifebout and Yasir Saki, though. The drivers that came in under the second safety car really worked out for them because now they are the effective race leaders, of course. They were going to have to oh. make another stop. Lifebout is now the race leader, the net race leader. He started fifth, now he's in the lead. Yasser started tenth, now he's in the vice lead. Uh, Giovanni and Americ Americano. We know Alan Marciano. Alan Marciano is lost two positions as well. Luca of Hassel and Nico have also won in there. Uh, Fraser, the big loser, though, uh, down from 6th to 17th. He wants to get up much higher because this driver, on any given day, he's a beast of a driver, I have to say. Absolutely. Jesla, one of the big losers from the crashes we saw. It was actually Jesla that came together with the Mercedes of Tito, not Ale Marciano. Two blue cars, but uh, wasn't able to identify the correct one there, so has lost a few places down in 10th now. We should be getting underway again because Freeze is just about to join the group. Safety car can get called in extremely late as well. It could be all the way around. It's coming go. at a nice time, though, thankfully enough. So for the third time in what feels like about 10 minutes, it is going to be Lifebout who backs the field up. And I wonder if he's going to go for the same strategy as we saw previously. So we'll just be waiting patiently for Lifebout to make his move. No. And is he going to go? He's got a big gap already. I don't know why he's not went. Oh, why is wait? It was seven tenths briefly. Oh, there's a bit of uh, RG Bargy. I hope not. Well, he's lost that advantage now. I think Lifeboat may have missed an opportunity there. There he goes now. And down the straight we go. We have already completed half the race. We've got 12 to go as this one's squabbling back there. That is Nico trying to get inside. No, that's a uh, looker passer going on the inside of Marciano, but he isn't unsuccessful in doing so. Oh, and that's... Angelo uh, losing places. It is Angelo losing places. Uh, but Jeslar gets up there as well. Jeslar. Jeslar with a brilliant move. And now he leads uh, Angelo in this title race, but not ahead of Lifeboat. Lifeboat will be well ahead if the results stand like this, but I don't think they're going to be so longer. Um, so it is still Lifeboat leading Saki, who's got massive advantage over him in terms of pace. Raw pace helps life out a lot. He's definitely the much, not trying to put a damper on Yashirasaki's hopes, but he's definitely the most skilled, more experienced of these drivers here. Giovanni and Alan Marciano also hanging about there too. We've got all of them right close together, but this separates the men from the boys. Turn 8, as well as 9, 10, 11, but you know, it's mainly turn 8. Got to get with perfection. You cannot make a little sliver out of line, otherwise that's it, your race is over. 
And that is Jesslar's really close to Chicho. I think he's much better on these medium rubber is Jeslar. Jeslar, of course, trying to avenge his previous loss from two weeks ago. Thought he had it, but the steward said, no, you were wrong. So Javano's closing right up to Saki. He's got the better pace, and he's not even using his battery. You can tell his setup's more geared to straight line speed as Jeslar has made the move off course with Taito. And now a life bout right behind him knows that Saki and Javano are going to be battling. They're going side by side still. Cannot be separated out of the corner. And Javano looking for something, but he's still bashing around Yarsa Saki. Sorry if we couldn't catch the whole image. But now this has brought Alamarciano into play. Alamarciano gets past Saki, but can he get past Javano? Yes, he can, or can he? Oh, wow! What's a move from Alamarciano? How is nobody facing backwards or upside down? We were almost four wide down there. We were nearly, or we were certainly three wide because we had the Red Bull Alpha Tari and the Aston Martin Saki. He's now trying to hold on to places ahead of Nico. Darth FIFA's going to try and get involved as well. This race is absolutely lit up since lap number 10. Luca Ripassa suddenly oh. on the podium. Big corner cut for Yasse Saki trying to defend. Yeah, and Darth FIFA pushing Nico to the other side now. Please come through the... Uh corner very nicely please thank you very much i was getting scared someone was going to go out of line but now all of this kicking off gives life a massive edge he's got a one and a half second lead uh give or take a few hundredths and now he should be running away but as you know anything can happen if another safety car comes out he will be hating the sight of that or the sound i should say because uh you're going to be hearing it from the team radio now Looks like uh, the battling has uh, cooled down a little after the insane flea war we had just seen. But now Luca Rapassa is trying to warm up his tyres, it seems, and gets the fastest lap, does light back. Now Luca Rapassa not going to make the move on Alan Marciano says, I want that place back. You just pushed me out of the way. Well, it's not going to be that easy trying to get it back now, is it, Luca Rapassa? Now DRS should be enabled here. Oh, and uh, Tito's had it enough. He's uh, went into the pits and retired. So that is Mercedes' involvement over. And now we have 17 drivers, including Cheslar going up the order, is he? On the outside of Nico, but he will get the inside of turn number four. But he's not going to get there in time. And Nico defending the position very well there. Yeah, aggressive defending from the Sauber, chopping across the nose of the Alpine. Both drivers oh, lucky there wasn't no! contact. Big wobble on the exit, though. Is this the invitation that Jesla needs? Yes, it is. Says thank you very much and assumes seventh place. And now it'll be Angelo all over the back of that Sauber car. Oh, no. We are talking freeze about him and then it all goes wrong. That's not a commentator's curse, please. It's a commentator's curse. For... I do not believe in the commentator's curse. But now Jesla has Nico and Angelo starting to gang up on him. Uh, Ferrari Alliance, it seems, coming into play, but Angelo having a little look outside Nico's inside, but he will not get position as for now. The gap is nearly two seconds up front. Luca Rapassa in the podium positions already, somehow, now sees a, a chance to get past Marciano. He will have the DRS. Lifeboat is double DRS distance. This is the last thing he wants. Coming through now are the two drivers, and it's easy picking for Luca Rapassa. Further behind, that's Angelo getting past Nico. Easy pickings for him as well, or is it? But further behind, Zane and Tico going side by side. And it looks Adam like Zane wins that battle. Adam Marciano, I have to say quickly, ran out of ERS very quickly on that lap and was absolutely swamped by Luca Ripassa. I wonder if the Red Bull is going to drop even more places because uh, everybody around has got sort of 15 or 10% more battery than the Red Bull at the moment. That's D'Angelo making a move on Jeslar and up he goes into 7th place. That's important in the title race because, of course, these two are equal on points with Lifebout. Look, Lifebout is well ahead. He's got he's cut down to 1.6, but I think Rapassa's got much better pace. as or now, And Lifebout just taking it slow, it seems. And, and don't blame him, absolutely, because this is a marathon, not a sprint. 
I think Rapat is running very low wings, but I think the McLaren may have just clouted the barrier, not picking up any damage, thankfully enough. But uh, definitely losing time. Dropped half a second and that's brought Ale Marciano right back into it. But uh, like I was saying, I think running very low wings because it looked like a rocket ship on the straight, especially passing the Red Bull. But we also saw it on the restart with that McLaren as well, getting through a couple of cars. So Lightbait still leading by two seconds. It looks like uh, another day at Dini office from Max Verstappen. Uh, but his car, a um, Red Bull, is not leading this race. He's going to have to try and claw his way back into second. He will have the DRS, so once he gets back into the stretch, then Giovanni and Yashasaki and all the other drivers behind him, other than Fraser, will too. Fraser can't seem to get anywhere. He's two seconds behind his nearest challenger. But our Marciano is going to be switching the positions again for second place. And Darfi for as well, trying to big for fifth place. And up he goes. Oh, he gets hit from behind from Yasuo Saki and is nearly pushed into the wall. He's lucky he didn't hit it, but he is sticking for fifth position for now. Great recovery from the Ferrari driver as Lightbase Gaps goes back up to two seconds. Barna's well, got a lot more ARS than a lot of the drivers around him, so that could really play into his hands as we come into the last seven laps of the race. Luca Rapasso not close enough to make a move down into turn three, and Ale Marciano will stay in second place for the time being. Look at the gap between sixth and seventh, though. Angelo and Jezza have been squabbling very hard. They've managed to drop out of DRS range. I think they're going to be able to get it back, but it has cost them a little bit of time that they didn't really have. Absolutely, yes. The gap now over two seconds for a lifeboat. So it become very ominous for the 15 other drivers behind him still in the race. As now, Alan Marshall and Luca Vassar swoop into turn number eight. Once again, keeping it relatively clean. I'm surprised we haven't seen uh, any big mistakes happen out of that turn. It all kept it relatively clean, relatively free of drama. So Yasrosaki is currently sandwiched in between two Scarlet Red Ferraris. Coming out through the second sector. As now the gap starts to get even bigger. You can tell that Luca Rapasa has better pace around the corners. And now he's going to have an opportunity to get that second position back. I would watch for Giovanna as well though. Got nearly 40% ERS. Got to keep an eye. Being very smart charging the battery. I think we are going to see this change for second place once again. Both drivers flashing as they come down the straight and the uh, Red Bull gets out of the way. Off the McLaren through goes Luca Rapassa and we swap positions once again. Angelo, we were speaking about it, already caught up to the back of this group. Left Jessar in his wake a little bit and Zane is now the driver that has fallen out of DRS range. Yeah, Zane, 1.2 seconds down on Zane. As we see the drivers come through the first three corners once again. All right angled it seems. 90 degrees. Quite uh, timid corners, but, you know, they had to make do with what they got. So, they decided to maximise their creativity in the second sector. Is creativity really the right word? Because some of these corners are... I mean, they don't exactly lend themselves well for overtaking and uh, close yeah, following, you have to say. Inspiration from Monaco, which you've got to be quite accurate with where you put your car. True. It's not just about true. not just about overtaking, it's keeping it through there. Whoa! Was that Yasser Sakin and going out of line at the castle section? Which is one of the creative corners. I mean, they had to do with what they were given. Kind of reminds me of how they were going to do the London circuit. They're going to go through Admiralty Arch. Uh, they were only going to fit one car through there. I mean, that's never going to end well. Absolutely not. And that's why we'll never have a London Grand Prix, besides other reasons. Then again, Keep we still went to Las Vegas. Yes, Keep please. Silverstone. Oh, I like Brands Hatch, though. Eh... Probably not suitable for the current generation, realistically. Luca Rapasa is starting to bolt, though. And uh, Ali Marciano, nearly eight tenths, nine tenths outside of the uh, McLaren's gearbox. That didn't make a lot of sense. Pulling it back, though, with no DRS, of course. But I think Luca Rapasa might be able to pull away. Coolman in the second McLaren up into the top ten point paying what? position for Coolman. Nico dropping out. The two uh, Salvas Whoa. have started to tumble. Oh, the two Alpines have collided. Oh, no, it wasn't Alpine. Sorry, it was the Cyber. Uh, I thought it was an Alpine there, and we realized, oh no, Jeslar is up there still. Yeah, that was semi collided with, um, I think it was Nico, and he has fallen right down to 15th place. And uh, Fraser has gotten it. Is he on softs? 
Yeah, pity. He was on, uh, I think he was on seven lap holder tyres and everybody else dropping off the back of the pack decided might as well stick a new set of boots on and picked up uh, the fastest lap. Yeah, so Sam is now down his 15th place, the last thing he wanted. Now, Fraser's probably just hoping for a Hail Mary safety car at this rate, which has happened before. Uh, of course, you remember those days, I think it was, was it Jarno Watmere? And he went from like 10th to 3rd in two laps after the safety car. It was one of the run through of the gods. Need to Laps watch of the gods. Ne not Giovanni. Need to watch Angelo, sorry. All over the back of Yasisaki, pretty much pushing him through the middle sector. This Ferrari could be on the move very, very shortly as Yasisaki runs a little bit wide through turn 16. This might be the opportunity for that second Ferrari car. Giovanni also very close to the back of Ale Marciano. And here we go, we're going to war once again in the south state of Azerbaijan. Through goes Giovanni into the podium spots, I would presume. And Angelo is still trying to make his way through, but is he going to do it? Is he going to go for the inside? Giovanni gets through into third place. And Angelo could not get past Saki. Must be that DRS he got from the, ironically, his teammate, Dar FIFA. Now, Giovanni's going to get through. He's going to go into second place already. Where's this pace come from for Giovanni? He's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, he's been saving up a lot of ERS. Got Whoa! up to about 65%. That was uh, Angelo going for the inside of Saki, but now Saki is the inside. He's going to battle back, and he pushes Angelo into the wall. Angelo lucky on not to get any damage, but he's definitely losing ground. He's going to get revenge through the... Oh, no! Saki has spun... And that was the last thing we wanted to see. Saki spinning round and Angelo might be going to the steward's office soon. Always going to always gonna happen when you're racing that Oof. hard through those sequence of corners. And uh, yeah, the Aston Martin was this time the driver that came off worse. Pushed Angelo out of DRS range. I think he's going to get it back and already back within a second of his teammate. But uh, yeah, that might be one the stewards want to have a little look at. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, so Saki is going to be particularly pleased about it. Although... Was there really anywhere that Angelo could go? We'll have to see because we weren't quite on board when it happened. We have five laps left. Well, we'll make it four when uh, Lightbit crosses the line. But uh, Angelo was way too aggressive in turn five, I feel. I don't think this collision would have happened. Fraser making his way up the order, picking off the back markers. But he's going to have a long way to go to get to Yasusaki, who is down in 13th after that collision with Angelo. Back to the front now. It is still life bound. But that gap, I tell you what, that gap is starting to come down. It's back to 1.9. It was 2.4 as Luca tries and fails to get to Luca Rapassa, uh, Giovanni, before the first corner. And now the Ferraris are 5th and 6th, but I don't think it'll be 5th and 6th for long. Ali Marciano really struggling at now at Red Bull. Looks like the most powerful car in Formula 1 today is too hot to handle for some drivers, including myself. Giovanni has definitely decided now is go time. It's now or never for him if he's going to try and get the win in this race. Life bout, the gap was coming down, like you said. Was it about two and a half seconds, I think? Yes. The previous two, lap, now that's two, a 1.7. 2.4, I think. Yeah, so just burning that battery that was saved up will probably continue to do so and try and get as close as possible. Wants to get within a second, probably by the start of the last lap, and then maybe try and win a drag race up to the line to finish. So, here they come once again. Life bout. Still in the lead, coming through turn eight. It looks so scary going through it from that angle. You think, oh, you're going to hit it, but no, he doesn't hit it. Nobody's hitting it tonight. Everyone keeping it relatively clean. Look how close Angelo's got to his teammate. Surely you've got to yield if you're Darth FIFA. You would imagine so, but I have to say, red light spells danger, and it certainly does for Ale Marciano. Dropped out of DRS range of the two drivers in front, and those two Scarlet Fries looking very menacing behind the Red Bull. And it could be sixth place by the end of the straight, because you double can see team. the light flashing at the back of the Red Bull. Yeah, double tag team soon, but then again, Angelo's also got little uh, ERS coming out of his car. So don't think we're going to get a safety car now, because it's way too late in the race. So... Uh, Fraser's not going to get his wish, I presume. And here we go. The Ferraris are going to be ganging up on Ali Marciano like the swamp. And the swamp has got through and into fourth and fifth. And now they're going to be chasing down Rapasa, but he is over a second ahead. 
Rapasa got very close to the back of Giovanna, but didn't elect to go for the overtake. So certainly trying to see what pace Giovanna has got. But the gap has stabilized, only going down by about a tenth on the previous visit. I think Lifebout, barring any major mistakes, has probably got this one in the bag. Oh, you don't want to be uh, saying that too soon. Angel's still not ahead of his teammate. You think you'd let him through by now. Because uh, Darth FIFA doesn't seem to be... Uh, well, to be fair, they've both got very little deep energy in their battery. But I tell you what... Giovanni still has some energy in his battery, and he's actually starting to close up. He has to go, wait until that last lap. Yeah, got to get inside one second if he's going to have any chance on the run-up towards the line. That's probably where you would imagine, but goes a little bit deep into the castle section, loses a couple of tenths as a result. This is going to be uh, really that. stressful for Lifebout and probably infuriating for Luca Rapasa, who does look like he's got the pace on Giovanni, just doesn't have the ERS charge to utilise. The two Ferraris. The Baron is a sector one. That's uh, Laurentino. Laurentino's lost a bit of his wing. He's in 16th place anyways, so not going to change the order much. Oh! Angelo's made a mistake. That's not what you want to do now. And now I think Darth might be on his own here as uh, Laurentino is uh, getting penalty for cutting the corner. I'm assuming that wing is not helping him at all. He's still going to get DRS, but Angelo's going to have a long way to go. He's going to have to use up... Well, he's got no energy. Pretty much everyone has no energy, and I think that's Laurentino stuck in the castle section. Yes, it is. Two laps to go, and it looks like Lifebout might have his third one of the season, bar any crazy happenings. But now, Giovanno, even with that energy, it's still not going to be enough. He needs to find some extra temps in those corners. And I should mention, uh, these drivers have been doing 11 laps on these tyres. And Luca sticking with Giovanno as the two Ferraris finally seeming to change position. No, Darth FIFA saying, no, I want to win this win this race of the teammates today. Fraser has realized he can't get anywhere and he will be retiring on the spot and out of this race. So 15 drivers remain. I really say it's uh, 14 because we've had two drivers well down the order. They are um, only in the first couple of corners. So... Oh, that gap is actually closing. No. Yeah, I was going to say, look how close it is. This is uh, Giovanna going, now is the time to oh, go. Geez, right? Can he get inside that one second window and get a lovely toe down the main Needs straight? Needs to use Think the energy. Lifebout's just trying to respond, though. Needs to use the energy, though. Lifeboat needs to keep using it. But Giovanna's lost it all. I think Giovanna's run out of energy. I think he might have had his last chance. He's in the DRS detection. No, he has to be perfect out of this corner. He's... Giving it everything he's got. He's within one second. And now what is going on? How has he found this pace? Has he been better in the corners? Oh, no, he's back out of one second. I don't think he's going to have enough. It's back under one second. No, it's so fluctuates at one second. Has he done it? We'll have to see. It doesn't look good from my point, but it's not all lost yet. One lap to go as finally Angelo gets past his teammate with the DRS. I actually don't think he even used any DRS during that stretch. Didn't even need to use it. And now they'll be defending from... Adam Marciano and Chesler needs these points. But I think it's starting to uh, come out of uh, all proportions for Giovanni. Well, yeah, that's one shot, but I don't think he's going to be close enough to get a move. I think he's just run out of time. It was under a second for a few moments in the final sector, but just didn't have it. Lifebout using all of the energy he had remaining as well, and that is what's going to keep him in the lead, you would imagine. Clout of the barrier for Ali Marciano as he continues to be pressurized by Jesler and potentially oh. his teammate as well. That Red Bull is all over the place. Jesler looking for the smallest of gaps to try and make a move. Very, very good defending from Ali Marciano, despite not having a lot of pace left at the moment. 1.16. Luca Lepas has had a drama freeze. as well, by the way. Yeah, he's got Angelo right behind him. This could be for a podium position for Angelo, presuming that he isn't declared at fault with that collision with Yashosaki. Koman gets a penalty. He's in ninth. That actually, he will only probably lose one position because Taicho and Nick are battling through. Actually, Nick spun, uh, so he's out of contention. Angelo right in the back. I, I don't think Giovanni's going to be close enough coming through these final few corners. I think Lifeboat might have done enough, but as you can see. He's closed the gap so as much as he can. I don't think it's going to be enough. We have to take a look. These two Ferraris are ganging up on this McLaren of Luca Passa. They're going to all get the DRS. It's all up in the air. Coming through the final corner. I think Lifeboat may have just held on long enough. No energy for Giovanni. Lifeboat's already celebrating. He knows he's got it now. He's winning. But who's going to get the final podium position? It's three cars to the line. 
Leap across the lane, Javon across the lane, ends up at 40, I mean, it is a photo! Oh. And Angelo edges it by one a millisecond. thousandth of a second! Provisional, though, of course, he was in a collision with uh, Yasser Saki, so you never know, that might go back to Luca Rapasa. Despite that penalty, uh, Coleman stays in ninth position. But it is a lifeboat that takes his third one of the season and a big lead in this championship now on 60 points. Clearly it was moving day and uh, yeah, like you said, big advantage now. And he is going to be the the, uh, the hunted driver as everybody tries to chase him down in the final couple of rounds. Brilliant performance. It did uh, fall into his hands or fall into his lap a little bit with that third safety car, but you've got to make it work. And in the end, it was seven tenths the margin ahead of Giovanni. And then our three way drag race up to the line, the two Ferraris sandwiching the McLaren. It was Angelo who completes the podium, provisionally at least ahead of Luca Rapasso, who did a brilliant job from 11th on the grid, you have to say. Behind them, Jesla was in the walls a lot, battling very hard, coming home ahead of Ali Marciano. Just about over the line, another drag race with the two Red Bulls following. Cool man, despite the penalty, stays in ninth and Tico rounding out the points paying positions for Williams Nico dropping out right at the end Yase Saki was up there battling for the win but contact with Angelo shoved him down into 12th then comes Nick Sem was uh, in the wars a little bit and then Lorenzino and Fraser classified but two laps down Tito Caraccelli and Christian Block the retirees Yeah, so uh, one thousand for a second separating the podium finishes but that might be taken away from him We'll have to see, and if it is, he'll be going down to eighth at least, because uh, it'll be a five-second wow. penalty. He'll be an eighth, nine, nine, one, one, eight behind. But it is Giovanni, and uh, not Giovanni. Uh, Lifeboat, the only hard driver, the only team that had one driver racing tonight, and he represented them very well indeed. Didn't even need the intel. Gets it, finishes ahead of Giovanni, who did start the race on pole. They couldn't manage to win it. Yeah, Angelo, wow. But he will be having a look out for that penalty, I think. Yeah, uh, Yasser Saki's very unhappy with him. Says it might cost I mean, him I've his chance seen, of points. I've just seen a picture of it from uh, Angelo's point of view, and it doesn't make for great viewing, I have to say, if you're a supporter of the team in red. Yeah, that's... Uh, you should have been backing out there. Well... I think there is uh, one little phrase we have to say because that was a very enthralling race and I think you know what it is. Yes. Well, well I've got to say, well done, Baku, first of all. That was a there brilliant was race. Go. Well done, Baku. Uh, where are we going next week? Oh, I did have a look at this, but it has escaped me. So if I just jump quickly over the track we are visiting next is Zanvoort Max Verstappen land oh, for no. the third last du, race du, just du, three du. Oh, ESGL die you thought I was going to say Max Verstappen I did three races to go we go to the legendary Interlago circuit after that before finishing in the United States of the United Kingdom America United States United Kingdom great I any last words? No, that was uh, very, very exciting. It was uh, a little bit messy at times, but uh, more often than not, the racing was pretty, pretty good. So uh, congratulations to everyone and to Lifebout for, uh, well, assuming that championship lead. Yeah, well, I think I should leave it there. We've got three rounds to go after this uh, in consecutive weeks. Back on the 15th at 8 o'clock. Uh... Make sure you keep subscribing. Well, actually, you can only subscribe once, but you know what I mean. Uh, keep following us. Stay subscribed. Get to uh, get us liked. Get us shouted out on all of those social media platforms if you can. Check Audio. out the sponsors. Yeah, check out the sponsors. We can't forget those. I don't know why I forget those. I think I'm on the I'm the BBC here where they don't have any advertisements. Yes, uh, we will be back next week at Zanvoort. Same time, same place. You know where to be. Until next week, what uh, an insane end for the win. But it is Lifeboat that takes win number three and in commanding control now, uh, considering if Angelo does get reprimanded or penalised for that incident with Yashirasaki. Well, I'll see you next week. Hopefully you'll be there too. Thank you for watching.